Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness, and come into his presence with singing. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the flock he tends. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give, Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the, the Lord, Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness is for all generations. Amen. This entire commandment that I command you today, you must diligently observe so that you may live and increase and go in and occupy the land that the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The clothes on your back did not wear out, and your feet did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a parent disciplines a child, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Therefore, keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, 
a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us unite our hearts and our minds, our voices and our spirits in this prayer of thanksgiving. Lord of all, we give thanks for the blessings of our lives, the food that sustains us, the clothes that protect us, the shelter that shields our bodies from the elements, the love that sustains our souls, the peace that guards us against fear, our faith that gives us hope. Lord of all, we are grateful for the blessings of life received from you. May we sow seeds of justice. May we tend the fires of truth. May we learn the ways of wisdom. May we share the bread of life. And may we care for the bodies and souls of the weary and the sick. And may we bless others with gifts of kindness. Lord of all, Remind us that you are the God of abundance. There is enough for everyone. There is more than enough, so we need not be afraid to share. Thank you for your goodness and care. Amen. We continue reading now from Deuteronomy chapter number 8, verses 11 through 18. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. 
When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors as he is doing today. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. To state the obvious, our Thanksgiving celebrations will be different this year. Many of the traditions we've enjoyed across the years will be modified. Family gatherings, if they occur at all, will likely be smaller. Our usual guests may politely turn down our invitations to join us on Thanksgiving Day. Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is still on, but it won't be a parade. This Thanksgiving Day, we may feel a little more vulnerable. We may be more aware that life is a gift, the most wonderful gift of all. The day may be a little more somber, as we are aware of how many people across our land and the world will have an empty place at the table. There may be a little more anxiousness at the table with folks excusing themselves a little earlier for fear of being exposed to the coronavirus. This Thanksgiving day will be different and this difference inspires us to count our blessings and to give thanks to God. For we are witnessing in the present moment just how fragile life is. Sometimes we take for granted a new day has begun. Upon reflection, a new day is really a rare gift of God. This Thanksgiving Day, I hope memory, humility, and gratitude rise to the forefront of our celebrations. One of our family's Thanksgiving traditions is to share memories that inspire humility and gratitude. I'm sure that tradition will continue, and I am confident that I will tell a story I tell most Thanksgivings. It is a story that shapes our family even though Chip has no real memory of it, and Rusty had not yet arrived on the scene when this event occurred. However, across the years, this story has become a part of our family DNA. In August of 1977, Rita Chip, who was only one year old, and I moved to Louisville where I enrolled in Southern Seminary. Those first months in Louisville were hard. Our apartment was all the way across town from the seminary. We were isolated from other seminary families who were facing the same struggles that we were. It was difficult to find jobs. Money was short and we were stretching the few dollars we had as far as they would go. Our savings were dwindling by the day. When we moved to Louisville, my father was working in Cuba. October came, my father returned stateside. My son is excited. Papa is coming to see us. Papa is coming to see us. We were broke, no money for groceries, but no worries. I was confident my father would fill the empty fridge and the empty and bare cabinets. Friday afternoon arrives. There's a knock at the door. There's a joyful reunion in our small apartment. Chip hugs Papa and Mama. Then, in a few minutes, he runs to the kitchen, throws open the refrigerator door and yells, Papa, you want some loney? 
There inside the fridge was a container with two slices of Oscar Mayer bologna. This memory helps my family get to gratitude on Thanksgiving Day. The memory inspires a certain humility, for we recall that time when things were the toughest for our family. Seven hours away from home, strangers in a new city, only a few newfound friends, no money for the simple pleasures of life. Those first two years in Louisville remain the toughest years of our life together. The story also reminds us that the scarcity of it all could not dampen the joy of a little boy who was ready to share all that he had with his papa. Moses encourages God's people to remember a story. Remember, remember, he says, the long way the Lord your God led you those 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you. Remember, he let you hunger, and then he fed you manna, so you would understand that we do not live by bread alone. Remember, remember the clothes on your back did not wear out. Remember, your feet did not swell. Remember, the Lord was bringing you to a good land, a land with flowing streams, a land of wheat and barley, a land of vineyards and pomegranates and fig trees, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you would eat without scarcity, a land where you will lack nothing, a land where you will eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Moses believed that God's people would need one day for a memory. They would need this memory for God's people suffered from short memories. Moses was confident there would come a day when they would forget, and he envisioned when that day would come. That day would come when they had ate their fill and built fine homes for themselves. The day when their herds and flocks had multiplied and their gold and silver had increased. Moses was confident that on that day they would forget, and in their forgetfulness, they would begin to tell themselves a new story. Their new story would go this way, by my power and the might of my own hand, I have gotten this wealth. Their new story would skim over the acts of the Lord, if they bothered to mention them at all. And of course, they might make a casual reference to God, saying something like, God, God sure has been good to us. But the new story will now be their story, a story of their will, their power, their creativity, their ingenuity, their abilities, and their accomplishments. They will conveniently forget that the source of their power, allowing them to achieve, accomplish, and acquire, that source was God himself. They will forget everything began as a gift from God. Now, I think as Americans, we face a sobering thanksgiving. We are experiencing firsthand new limits of our freedom we cherish so deeply. We cannot go and do whatever we desire. A pandemic, pandemic which is beyond our control, is impacting our lives in ways that we've never experienced before. This Thanksgiving, we are more aware of how fragile and vulnerable life truly is. Perhaps this Thanksgiving, we realize why those early pilgrims were so grateful just to have survived in their brave new world. There's a sense of solidarity this Thanksgiving that we have never known before, as the coronavirus has no favorites. 
It lies in wait for us all, regardless of who we are, regardless of where we live, regardless of age or gender, regardless of status or wealth. We know in this time there are friends and family members hurting financially in ways that they have never struggled before. They have been furloughed or laid off. They have gone through savings and lines of credit. They are a month or maybe even days from financial ruin. We have other friends and family members living in an entirely different world from those friends. These friends, thankfully, have been able to work from home. Thankfully, their jobs have not been threatened. Thankfully, even in this peculiar time, they have been able to buy a house or a new car using the advantage of the low interest rates the pandemic has unleashed. In this peculiar time around this Thanksgiving, children have returned to virtual learning. Parents and children are struggling with the demands and with the technology. Dedicated teachers are going to places they have never gone before as they seek to engage their students who are not in their classroom. Caring professionals are delivering food to the homes of children. This Thanksgiving Day, we may be truly grateful for all those things we once took for granted. Human touch, human connection, and human interaction. For the first time in our lives, we have a different understanding, a deeper understanding of life as an extravagant gift. On Thanksgiving days of the past, we might have found it challenging to express a profound sense of gratitude. Most of us had everything we needed and most of what we wanted. We had no fear of going hungry or anyone in our family having less than enough. We were safe in our homes, enjoying the company of the people we love most in this world. It was challenging to resist the temptation of sitting back and looking at all that we had accomplished with a deep satisfaction, with only a brief acknowledgement of the graciousness and the goodness of God. It appears to me that most spiritual teachers, like Moses, understand, that our, understand our human connection to our stuff. It's important to us. In some cases, it defines who we are. In many cases, it tells us what we have accomplished and that we have accomplished something with our lives. The treasures of earth are significant to us. We rarely see them the way Jesus sees them. Our fine clothing loses a battle to moths or for us to style. Our shiny objects get mangled up in rust. We install alarm systems to keep intruders from stealing our stuff. Moses, like all great spiritual teachers, understand that there's a connection between memory and gratitude. Forgetfulness undermines gratitude. Forgetfulness breeds selfishness. Forgetfulness inspires a sense of entitlement. We all need a story that reminds us of what God has done for us. We all need a story that impresses upon us that life is a gift and our lives are an extravagant gift from God. We all need a story that reminds us that there was a time when we were much more dependent upon God than we may feel today, surrounded by all our stuff. We all need a story that helps us grasp this bit of wisdom. It is not about our money, nor about our stuff. As Jesus said, life is more than an abundance of possessions. I believe that there is a connection between memory and 
gratitude, and generosity. I believe gratitude inspires generous living. And we all need a story, a story that reminds us that we didn't do this all by ourselves. We had some help along the way, significant help, God's help. We may have worked hard, we may have sacrificed, we may have gotten lucky, but the life we enjoy is a gift. And so many of those wonderful things of life, of life cost us absolutely nothing. Awakening to a new morning, soaking in an amazing sunrise, staring past the moon into a sky of twinkling stars, the graciousness of a friend, the kindness of a stranger, the love of those who love us. Things are nothing without life, and life is the ultimate gift. Life is a gift from God. Even when we acknowledge that life is a gift from God, this is how life goes. The same with us as with Job. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Even when we embrace life as a gift, the old sage was right. There is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. And life comes to all of us in all of its goodness and with all of its trials. This Thanksgiving Day will be celebrated in a time and a season of life that inspires an inescapable anxiousness, that stalks us some days with fear, that terrifies us with a sense that life is beyond our control, that stirs within us an awareness of how fragile and vulnerable life is. This Thanksgiving Day, celebrating in this time of the pandemic, when we are so anxious and afraid, may remind us of our dependence upon God, a reminder that we need, and may inspire new stories that in the future will connect for us memory, gratitude, and humility. Perhaps this Thanksgiving Day, the wonder, the uniqueness, the fragility, and the vulnerability of life will be impressed so deeply upon our souls that we will never forget God and His gift of life. Memories that will become stories that never end with, and I did this, and I accomplished that, and all you see is mine. But stories that end with, by the grace of God, this life has been a good life. Thanks be to God. You know that Thanksgiving Day in the midst of the pandemic will be different. I learned a humility long ago that inspired a gratitude toward God that has never left me. This Thanksgiving Day in this season of the pandemic, write your story. Your story that will inspire humility, gratitude, and ultimately generosity in your living. Amen. As we conclude our worship on this, our Lord's Day, let us offer one another this blessing. As we go, remind us, gracious God, of your extravagant generosity. May we express our gratitude to you by sharing generously with others. May we offer our lives to you in acts of compassion for one another. May we welcome with gladness the strangers we meet along the way. May we walk slowly through the coming days, aware of your gifts of breath, of love, of life itself. Amen.